This video is about the Cricut Explore Air 2. Uh, some of the information may be useful for other models as well as the Cricut Maker or the Explore 1 or other models. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is troubleshooting, um, red light error uh, symptom, um, sensors and motors, and uh, parts of the board. Um, and then if you're still interested, then I'll get some technical stuff for the elect electricians that might be interested in or um, coders or something like that. Um, but uh, let's get started. I want to show you guys how you can test stuff. I keep getting questions about testing motors. Um, there's a simple test you can do. You get all this, you know, you get access to the motor. This right side controls the left and right movement and then this motor controls this roller to feed the thing in so now if say your carriage isn't moving left to right um, what you want to do is if you look here you'll see this says positive this says negative these motors spin both ways okay so you can switch the positive to the negative side and it'll spin one way and then put the positive on that side, it'll spin the other way. All you need is a nine volt battery and you can test it, I'll show you how. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna take, let's see here, if you follow these silver um, solder points, you'll find that they go to the last two pins on the left side. Okay, so those two pins. So you just gotta connect those two pins to the positive and negative. And then you can switch it around and test if it spins the other way, okay? So I've already got that side hooked up onto one. So I'm just gonna ground it out right here. So that's the one way, that's the other way. So if you got it to do that, you know you're in good shape as far as that goes. Um, now, if you notice that the carriage slams into the side and makes a bunch of noise and keeps going, da -da 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 -da, most likely what you're going to have to do, tighten that right there. Most likely your, your belt tension is too loose. Uh, let's see here. Now, I had a question about the DC jack, about um, they dropped their cricket and broke it um, where it plugs in. You're talking about this part right here. If that's what you did and this thing is messed up and only this thing, then you can desolder this, pull it out, put on a new one, and hopefully you're in good shape. If you broke some other stuff around here, eh, you might be you might be out of luck. Um, now let's go on to the encoder circuit. I've built a breadboard here to describe the sensors for the motor um, and how they work. So if you'll see, you'll notice here all these little lines. There's a light in here that sends, sends the light through and if it hits a line, it gets blocked and it sends a signal saying it's blocked. I believe there are two readers in here and one light um, as there are two wires um, for the sensor and then a power and a ground. Um, so the colors on that are gonna be your pink. Your pink one is gonna be uh, positive, your black is negative, your blue and your green are the data. So I've got a little breadboard here um, to show you how this circuit works uh, with three volt powered um, into the red and the black one and you'll notice that one light goes on. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna I'm gonna spin. Actually we'll try this. We'll move the carriage and you'll see that they blink. And if I move it slow enough it'll blink left to right and then you go the other way and it blinks 
Um, well, that was left to right, and the other one was right to left. Yeah, so it's very touchy. Um, just slight movements uh, will make it so that it lights up. So if that passes, then you know your sensor should be okay um, for your encoder motor. Now, there are other sensors in here, and I'll show you how those work in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about the red light error. If you have a red light error, and you've tried my other video and that didn't work, you might be out of luck. Chances are you are. I have about 10 of these boards and they're all bad. Let me get my plug here. Okay, so what happens if you have the red light error is you plug it in and you get a red light. Okay, now, what that means is Cricket, uh, I'm not going to try to rant about Cricket because I could go on and on and on. Um, but basically, if you have this red light on and you have this plugged in and your, your power light button board, um, you're pretty much screwed. Throw the board, throw, throw it away. I don't know. Do something with it. But yeah, there's not much you can do. I'll discuss more in detail what it is, what I think it is and maybe a possible fix, but it's most likely not gonna be worth it. Um, let me show you what it should look like if you have this plugged in. So then you can know if your board is good or not. Uh, this one right here, is, sorry guys, got two hands and trying to do this all here. So, what happens if you have a good board is I have this oh geez, I have this motor uh, disconnected but you can see it so you got a good board you have to have this plugged in otherwise what happens when you plug this into a good board without this in you don't get any light at all, but that doesn't mean it's bad because it's a good board. Um, so you just got to know that you need that if you plug it in and you don't get a light, you might still have to plug in the cartridge. But if you plug it in without the cartridge and you get a red light, your board is bad. Now, what happens here when I plug this in? is this is a good board is we don't get a light right away but we get light when we turn it on now this motor is spinning it's hard to see and what it's doing is it's trying to see if the pen is going to move up and down now once I, once it sees it, then the light turns on, okay? Now, it's gonna start blinking. The reason why it's blinking is because I don't have the motor and the encoder plugged in, okay? So, the board is still good. I've tested it, it works. Um, but that gives you a little explanation of what the symptoms are of a good board and symptoms of a bad board. Now let me um, go back. See, I unplug this and the, the motor starts spinning a little by little. It's a step motor. And then, okay. So that's that. Let me unplug this so I can get on to the next thing, which is this cartridge motor and sensor. Okay, now what you have here is you have a little tab on this that lines up in that sensor and blocks it, okay? And when it's blocked, it sends a signal, and then when it's not blocked, it sends another signal, okay? So 
that it's topped out or it's not. So basically, black wire is ground, red, red, red wire is positive, white wire is the data that it sends if it's up or down. Um, now, it's the same thing for this sensor on this side and similar to this sensor for the printing cut. The, the wires are the same, um, the sensor is a little bit different. But uh, this is what the printing cut sensor looks like on this model, the Explorer Air 2. Um, now, testing these motors is a little bit different. Uh, you can, if you have a good board, you can do what I did and just plug it in and it'll start to spin. Um, if you don't, uh, there's a couple things you can do that'll tell you if it might be good. One is just by spinning it. It should spin nice and freely, but you should feel a little, almost like ticking or something when you spin it both ways. Um, it's called a stepper motor, in case you are wondering and didn't know. Now, one way to test it is, it's kind of a backwards way to test it, but you plug an LED in to this side and you spin it and it goes on. Spin it the other way and it blinks on. You can do the same thing for these two on this side. Goes on, goes on. Okay, that tells you that your motor might be okay. It's not a, it's not a for sure test, but that's one thing you can do. Now, um, let's see here. Let's go on to, if you're still watching this, man, you're, you're starting to see what my brain looks like. Um, let's see here. What are we going to talk about now? We had a question about the getting the B holder off. Um, so you got to watch my other video, find out how to take it apart. And then you got to take, take off these motors and then you got to take the belt off and then you take your, um, bar out and then you take your carriage out. And then it's just a matter of this screw right here, this screw right there, and that screw right there. And um, it should come right out. I'm not sure if these two have to come out or not. They might have to, but if you got this far, you should be able to figure it out on your own. Um, now, let's go over some of the technical things for someone who's hoping to figure out how to fix this red light error. Um, from my understanding, this is the problem. This stupid cartridge. It's garbage. Throw it out. It's junk. Why they made them? I don't know. Why? Because this cartridge and this encoder, from my understanding, that red light error is caused by a cross in here. And it's probably most likely going to be this little chip LF0362 or possibly this one FJ3091, I think it is. Um, that's my guess. I'm guessing it's this one I've looked. I found that Alibaba apparently has a couple vendors in China that have them. Um, I'm guessing that one, the FJ, is programmable, so even if you can find it, you might be screwed no matter what. Um, if that's the problem, there might be hope. I don't know. I, I might try to order one. Uh, I've been trying to. We'll see if that works. Now, um, let me just show you some of the bad voltages I got to give you an idea of what a good board looks like in case you have a bad board and you don't have a good board. Um, this is P100, what the encoder, I'm gonna try to go quick so you can stop it and pause it. These are voltages, good voltage, bad voltage. Encoder, J400, um, and some of these might not be perfect, but you know, that's the best of my knowledge. Now you got U100, and U100 there. Um, I made some notes. I don't know if this stuff is right or not, but um, 
And then you got P700, sh should be about 0.7. I don't know if that really matters. Um, but anyway, uh, these ones might be helpful. Um, here's FJ3091. Um, you got the top side, left, top to bottom, bottom, left to right, right, top to bottom. Um, let's see here. We got, this is what I think the problem is. Um, but they don't have any schematics on those two chips. So there's no way to tell what they're doing. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's the encoder and power for it. Um, here we have two bad voltages. This is what it should be. This is a good board. And this is the bad one. Okay. Another thing to note is this carriage. Now I've labeled on this thing that I'm going to show you, I've labeled the inside and this is the outside, okay? So I know it's kind of sloppy and messy, but deal with it. Uh, so this is your inside and your outside of a good board. And this is, let me write that down. And this is bad. This is your bad board. Now typically I'm getting 3.1. 1415 sometimes they would come in at about 3.2 but usually they're off by a little bit which is strange now i'm going to tell you about that um so if you're still watching man good for you uh hopefully we can help figure this thing out together because it's driving me nuts uh so i'll tell you right now that we got problems all in this area um specifically this little route has some sort of thing going on because it's not getting, I think it's not getting power from here. Um, this thing is a problem here. Um, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see the trails because you can't see them unless you take these things off, which I have. So there's that. And then we'll go up here. There's that. Okay. So maybe that'll help you. Uh, and you might want to see these trails. These plastic things come off, so you can take them off, but um, there they are anyways. Uh, so, what else on this board can I tell you that might help? Um, I don't know, it's a mess. Oh, here we go. Let me see these ones. These are the test points on the back, okay? So... I'm going to go over it really quick. You can pause it and stop it. Um, good, bad. I didn't measure all the bad because I found a bunch of bad and I just stopped. So these are what I came up with. It should be somewhat accurate. Maybe not perfect, but... Um, so there you go. That way if you have a bad board and you want to know what it should be, that might help you. It might not, I don't know. Um, so there you have it. I think that's just about it. I've went through a lot. If you like this, I know it's kind of got boring and, and hopeless towards the end, but hopefully you find something. Hopefully we can figure this out and, um, maybe, I don't know what to do about this, but maybe write reviews for Cricut and be like, hey, make, either have support or, you know, do, do something. <laughs> Fix these things. Alright, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. See you next time.